Hello everyone, this is my second tutorial. I am using a different video capturing software and I believe that we're going to get a much better result this time. Today we'll look at the paint deformation tool for 3D Studio Max 2010. Other versions of Max also have this feature so you are not limited if you do not have 2010. Um, let's get started here. I'm going to maximize my perspective window by hitting Alt W um, a lot of times you'll see people using this paint deformation tool to create landscapes so let's do that right now I'm gonna create a plane I'll just expand it here in my viewport hit G to get rid of the grid let's give it a better color something like a green alright go here's our green and what we want to do is go to the modify panel and let's give this a bunch of segments I'm going to hit F4 so that I can see my segments and let's up these like 100 by 100 that should be plenty for this exercise now we want to convert this to an editable poly so we're gonna right click the mesh go to convert to editable poly and to bring our rollout I guess it has sorry we're gonna scroll down to paint deformation right here at the very bottom I'm gonna go to push and pull now I am using a Wacom tablet which is a very handy thing to use for this particular tool because it is pressure sensitive so let's get rid of the um, the grid or not the grid but we don't need to see our segment so F4 and here we go I'm just gonna start painting it out as you can see it's a very easy way to create organic shapes so with my pen tool, if I push very lightly, it'll raise very lightly, and as, as I push harder, it becomes more severe. So now if we scroll, you can kind of see that. Very fun tool. As you can see, it would be very easy to build up mountains, create canyons by holding Alt. It'll actually indent. So you're not limited just to the raising of the polygons. And if we look down here in our rollouts, we've got a different, different uh, brush sizes, brush strength, brush options. Uh, you can go through all of those and play around with the settings. What I find, though, is let's delete this. Here's a much funner way to use this particular tool. So we're going to go back to the create. And we're going to pick a sphere, and make a nice sphere. Hit F4 so we can see our segments and we're gonna up these segments to something like a hundred enter okay let's go to the modify panel and um, convert this to an editable poly there we go and I'm gonna add a turbo smooth just so we get a little bit better results one iteration will be okay for now going to go to the material and let's assign this a very glossy material and let's make it some sort of a kind of a cool clay color here sure why not that'll do let's apply it to our sphere by having a nice glossy material on there it becomes easier to see exactly how we are deforming the surface okay go back to our editable poly and we're gonna click this right here which is show end results and that will apply the turbo smooth go to push and pull and now I'm gonna come down here to brush options I'm gonna click that and right here it says mirror Let's click the mirror and we're gonna mirror in X that's fine and we'll close that rotate this around so you guys can see a little better now what you can see is it's actually mirroring what I do on one side across the x axis to the other side. So now what we could do is we could actually make a face. So we just start bringing up the eyebrows here. And then we'll sink in the eye sockets. And bring up the nose. Now I'm just doing this very quickly. What you'd probably want to do is change your brush size a bit and
take your time, but for tutorial purposes, we're just going to do a very quick overview. So it's almost like sculpting in clay, or if you've used ZBrush, or always wanted to try ZBrush and have 3D Studio Max, you can use the Paint Deformation tool. Okay, I think I will bring my brush size down just a bit. And we'll start to build up the, the lips here. ugly dude but you get the idea really helps if you have the pen tool like a Wacom tablet I'm using the bamboo fun it's probably their cheapest model I think it cost me sixty dollars or something like that so I didn't spend a lot on it because I didn't want to spend the money if I hadn't really practiced with it and it works just fine the pressure sensitivity really helps with something like this it also helps in Photoshop and flash and illustrator and all those other programs so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you next time.